محمد حصوصة بداية الكاس الكتروجي نشر غارد ماي كوشن تو دكتور هاني ريغاردينغ ذا ازوريفيليك ازوفاجايتس Can you elaborate more about uh, consensus guidelines for diagnosis? Because you mentioned that the pediatric xenophilic is more common than adult. Because our technique for diagnosis or for endoscopy, you would take, we, we took two biopsy in each part of the cervicus, regardless what the endoscopic finding. So I don't know how the adult, they do it, regardless if it may cause a normal or abnormal. And just another comment about our data shows that most of our patients are asthmatic, so many family history of ITP with high isenophil count, peripheral isenophil count, this is isenophilic uh, as until perform otherwise. Okay, thank you for your question. So, no, I agree with you, and I think, you know, one of the messages I tried to, uh, you know, uh, uh, present is that in adults, and, and this is what we saw from some of the uh, uh, studies, is that you know some patients who, if you have any patients presenting with dysphagia, non-cardiac chest pain, uh, so any upper GI symptom that you're not sure about, uh, who even if the up, you know endoscopy is totally normal, uh, if there's uh, you know a history of asthma or allergies, I encourage, I encourage that you know, uh, or this is actually based on the recommendations to actually take biopsies. Uh, and the recommendation is to take two to four biopsies from both uh, distal and proximal esophagus because the disease can be uh, really patchy. Um, yeah, so, okay. And then uh, asthma, yeah, your question about asthma. So again, although in adults are now that I presented that the food allergens, that it may be air allergens, but also food allergens might play, play a big role. Uh, yeah, I'm Dr. Abdurrahman, Canaan Gastro Fellow, King Abdulaziz University Hospital. Uh, my question to Dr. Allen. Uh, just in a short question, uh, do you, there is any rule of, treat, of ectorotoid in the treatment of non-variceal bleeding or not? Oh, ectorotoid, yes, thank you. I'm sorry, I hadn't heard uh, the question. Yes, so uh, the answer is uh, that there are some ver very few uh, randomized trial evidence suggesting it may have a role to play. Uh, there's actually a large meta-analysis, but it dates back significantly and not, it doesn't emulate the current contemporary context of endoscopic treatment. Nonetheless, based on that, what we do recommend is in patients who have known variceal bleeding, if you don't know, and the patient is bleeding a lot by all means, but if you, even in the context of known variceal bleeding, if the patient is exsanguinating, by all means add it in the context of, of the management of the patient while you're waiting to go to either embolization or to surgical therapy because it may have a slight incremental role to play. Okay, two more questions. Uh, yes, it's just uh, about question about the helicobacter. Uh, Please by the try way. to make a short question. Yeah, uh, so just uh, from the study, it uh, shows that uh, there is higher recurrence rate in one year's time. Would you advise that we screen the patients again after one year after treating them for their H. pylori? Please. Uh, well, I mean, uh, the recommendation is really to do a test for uh, helicobacter pylori after four weeks from. Uh, from finishing the treatment, but if the patient is asymptomatic, there is no need to follow up after one year. So it's only four weeks after finishing the treatment. Okay. Uh, but only to just show you that the recurrence is high in those patients even after one year. Okay, Dr. Ali. Okay, thank you, Dr. Ali. Uh, I may ask a question for Dr. Hani. I have a young patient with isenophilic esophagitis. But the problem is recurrence. When I stop the steroid for four months, again the disease recurrence. Uh, my concern about maybe he develop in few years tolerance to steroid and steroid become of no benefit. Should we add any enter any new modalities now treatment like interleukin inhibitor on telecast or should we wait? Okay, yeah. So excellent question. So uh, yeah, so this is one of the main uh, you know areas is that you know the recurrence rate is very high once you stop their uh, topical steroids. And uh, I think I presented one. There's one study on using bedesonide for maintenance. Uh, and it helps, of course, it helps 
but we don't have also data on, you know, if you keep them on long-term uh, topical steroids, whether this results on things like, uh, you know, adrenal suppression and, and other side effects. Uh, there has been, I think, few small studies on using uh, immunomodulators, but again, there's nothing in, no proof that, you know, you can treat them as your, for example, uh, IBD patients where you just stick them on an immunomodulator. Just the last but two brief questions, uh, please. Okay. Yeah, so it's very brief. No I'm from the from Qasim area. My interest in H. pylori. So many people are going to the private sector, they are doing urea tests, coming positive, coming to my clinic. Only my abdominal pain, I do endoscopy is normal. What is the prevalence of H. pylori in normal population? And second uh, question, if we can replace, because tetracycline is not available in the market, if we can replace it with doxycycline or minocycline, instead of tetracycline. Thank you. Thank you for this uh, question. So regarding, uh, the, uh, according to my review and literature, the reported incidence of each father in general populations may be up to 20 percent. Uh, but those would become symptomatic actually 20 flus. So they are, majority they are asymptomatic, but if they develop certain 20 percent of those with each father, they will have the symptoms. So general uh, patient asymptomatic 20 percent, they will carry each father. This is the general prevalence. Uh, regarding doing endoscopy and they are normal, yes, still they have normal uh, endoscopic appearance, but the biopsy will prove the presence of uh, Hifilocobacter pylori. Uh, but there is no need, the recommendation, no need to go with endoscopy for this patient. It, enough to, to depend on the urea breath test for diagnosis and then you will treat. If they don't respond, then you can go and do a barja endoscopy. Even there is no ulcer, nothing? Even yeah. no biptic ulcer, no uh, severe gastritis, we okay, have to yeah. treat? I think you can discuss the uh, the break. Regarding the use of tetracycline, yeah, I agree it's tetracycline is underused, unfortunately, yeah, even though the resistance is very low, uh, up to zero percent. And the same thing applied to tetracycline is for tetracycline, this according to my knowledge. Two words, Hamma. Yeah, uh, that hemospray, Prof. Barkan, yes, hemospray, does it help in bleeding, spurting viruses? And what did you do with that spurter? You said it is very temporary. What did you do the next? Thank you for the question. Uh, I don't think you need to use a microphone, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, um, so, so two things. So first of all, the, the hemospray, um, the company that makes it, so it's made by three companies. It's made by uh, Cook. It's made by a company uh, with a product called the Endoclot that actually have no, no, clinical, no published clinical data right now that are based in Silicon Valley. Um, and, and it's also made a, a, in, a, in the form of Ankafrit, which is this herbal mixture of traditional Turkish uh, herbs and is only available in, in Turkey. Um, there is only published data in variceal bleeding using the anchor fruit, which seems to help quite significantly in achieving initial hemostasis. All these is the same thing, achieving hem initial hemostasis. The problem with the hemospray, because of theoretical risk of embolization, the Cook company has said that they feel that uh, var variceal bleeding is a contraindication to its use right now. I think that's wrong, because I think that even our, uh, in, in ulcer bleeding, we often, more often deal with uh, venous bleed than actual frank arterial spreading, although we do see arterial spreading. In light of this, uh, Ernst Kuypers in Rotterdam has actually published a case. They actually did a case of variceal bleeding uh, against the company's wishes, interestingly, and it worked quite well. Um, so it may have a role to play, but, but we'll have to see uh, with okay. regards to that. Mm. So I think okay. uh, you finished? I think there was a second part. No, no, no. no. You talked yeah, to yeah. Yeah. Patient did well. They brought him back for a second look, and they did combination treatment and avoided surgery. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, uh, as you can see, there are lots of questions, so they were very uh, hot and interesting topics. It remains for us to thank all the speakers for excellent presentations. And uh, I thank you for your participation and attention. Thank you.